If you think we're already having enough problems as it is with what's happening today, you're wrong. <laughs> Not to be a party pooper, but there's another concerning problem we'll all be facing as soon as 2023, and that's chip shortage. In today's video, we'll enlighten you on how this problem affects all of us and what the government and sectors have been trying to address. So without further ado, let's get into it. Just to give you an idea of what chips are used for and how they impact our lives, this particular fragment is made up of the processing and memory memory units of the modern digital computer. It's also often called a semiconductor or integrated circuit and they make up the tangible building structure that's used to make computers and run the software. These chips are either big or small and are used from toys to everyday appliances and pieces of equipment. For years now, the fabrication of chips has been struggling with figuring out the supply and demand. So what happens is the tech industry either has a shortage or a boom in the supply of chips. Despite having various resources and economic data to configure and project the production of these semiconductors, manufacturers are still trying to figure out the pattern of boom and bust cycles, which so happens every four or five years. And every year, false promises were made stating that these types of irregularities won't happen again and that their prognosis will be far more accurate this time around. But from the looks of it, the chip industry will experience an influx of demand followed by an equal drop in sales shortly after which is exactly what a boom and bust scenario is. Let's take for example the Semiconductor Industry Association, SIA, midterm report from 2020 and it was dry as ever. According to their report, 2018 saw record sales worth $468.8 billion, but the following year sales saw a drop of 12% and only made $412.3 billion. Of course, the industry was also greatly negatively affected by the COVID-19 pandemic, although they did predict a rise in revenues this 2021. But it wasn't modest at all since the rise of demand shot up to 26% and more year over year. The chip industry now forecasts that shortages are upon us soon since revenues are still on the rise this 2021 and will most likely extend until 2022. Then again, as stated earlier, their predictions are untrustworthy since the previous demand and supply forecasts strained too far from what the chip industry experienced in real time, and it's still a struggle to figure out the real supply and demand in the semiconductor industry. This year alone, the demand for laptops, phones, and other devices has increased so much that seeing the out-of-order, sold-out, and add-to-wish list is a pretty common occurrence that leads to customers signing up for the wait list. And the root of this problem, you ask? It stems from none other than the scarcity of semiconductors, which isn't showing any signs of letting up soon. And you know what else is worse? Soon it'll affect the production of everyday appliances that we rely on for our daily tasks, whether it be your microwave or your ring light. Compared to last year's stats, the global semiconductor production of January this year saw an increase of 13.2% despite manufacturers working around the clock to produce chips. The demand continues to grow because of how the pandemic not only affected our personal lives, but also our professional life. Until now, more companies, both big and and small are continuing to use the work from home setup so sales for personal computers, laptops, and tablets have increased meteorically. And not only that, since most people are still stuck at home, more and more users are relying on chip-powered electronics for recreation as well as to pass the time, whether it be for gaming or crypto mining. Cryptocurrency has risen among the trends now more than ever, and people are even digging their old laptops to mine Bitcoin while others bought PCs solely for crypto mining. Since since last year, PC manufacturers have been struggling with the lack of supplies despite seeing the highest recorded sales in the last decade in 2020. Several researchers pointed out that if parts and supplies were readily available, then those numbers would have been far higher. Even gamers are aware of this shortage, seeing how several consoles ran short in supply in recent months. Take for example Sony's PS5. Despite its steep price, it didn't stop gaming fans from ordering the popular console that Sony even admitted that they weren't able to keep up with the overwhelming demand, so a lot of customers are still on the wait list. Another example is Apple's iPhone 12 Pro, who saw a three-week waiting time. McKinsey's lead on semiconductors, Andres Burkhaki, told CDNet in an interview that it won't be long until consumers feel this growing problem. At some point, consumers will be affected by the chip crisis. The high noon season for consumer electronics are Q3 and Q4. There might be shortages of several products during this time, he explained to CDNet. 
safety net. And you know what comes after scarcity and supply paired with high demand? A price hike. Those who will suffer the most in this are businesses that make purchases in bulk. Companies don't usually order PCs by piece. They buy the whole setup in large numbers, but if not strategized rationally, their employees' quality of work may be affected, which will in turn hurt operations. But truth be told, we're already experiencing the ripple effect that semiconductors have in other markets, which were already pointed out to Forrester's research director, Glenn O'Donnell. We'll see plenty of consumer electronics, PCs, and toys that will have similar issues, O'Donnell told CDNet during an interview. The problem regarding global chip shortage was already being talked about in various communities, and even Reuters published a report wherein microwaves, washing machines, and even fridges are falling short because of the lack of semiconductor supply. Electrolux, an established home appliance company, shared in a recent report that the supply chain is suffering in many areas, especially electronic components. The market that has suffered the most throughout this global semiconductor shortage is the automotive industry. Earlier this year, esteemed car manufacturers Ford and General Motors announced that they would render some of their factories inactive because of the shortage, which sent tens of thousands of workers onto approximately 75% pay, according to the Washington Post. In line with this, NVIDIA CEO Jensen Huang said the need to re-engineer the automotive supply chain is something they must do. The automotive industry supply chain has to be reinvented. That's very clear, Huang stated at the GTC 2021 keynote. What the industry experienced was unfortunate and hopefully in the future unnecessary. Aside from Ford and General Motors, BMW also halted production at the company's Oxford mini plant. Seeing that the big car company is already suffering, steel service centers are starting to worry, especially those located in Europe where an automotives make up as much as 70% of sales for some mills. It's quite amazing how a small fragment of machinery or appliance can affect the whole economy, no? But O'Donnell also warns that there's a secondary effect that'll come into play because of this shortage, which is still under study. For example, farming has gone high-tech. O'Donnell begins to explain, if the farmer cannot get the new milking machines because they lack the chips, then his costs go higher and perhaps it impacts the price of milk. That sounds far-fetched, but I believe such a secondary economic impact is plausible. And from the looks of it, this problem looks like it won't resolve anytime soon since we're already at the last quarter of 2021. O'Donnell even predicts that this could go on until 2023. As we speak, chip manufacturers are already doing their utmost to make up for this lack. Intel even made an announcement recently that it'll be establishing two new chip factories in Arizona that cost $20 billion while also expanding operations in both the U.S. and Europe. TSMC also offered its support and pledged $100 billion to boost capacity. The United States, under the Biden administration, is also doing their part, where they promise to take aggressive steps to tackle the global shortage of processors as reported by Bloomberg. U.S. President Joe Biden is said to sign an executive order that will order a government-wide supply chain review for critical goods. But through this all, increasing manufacturing capacity will take time. The fastest construction time for building facilities that cater to chip manufacture could take two years. And at the end of the day, as soon as demand lessens, the pressure to produce supplies will also decrease. Daniel Gonkavs, research manager at Western Europe at IDC, has expressed this sentiment saying, supply constraints are much more demand-driven than supply-driven. He also added, providing components isn't the problem. The problem is that demand is much stronger than it used to be, so the pace of production is much slower than it should be. This is why it's very hard to predict when this will end. And just like that, we've run out of time. Hopefully today's video enlightened you on one of the pressing issues we're experiencing today. Are you feeling the effects of this by now? Let us know in the comments below. As always, thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button before you go. We'll see you at the next episode.